Hey there, in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about three tips for those historical bassoonists out there who are having issues adapting their right hand little finger to the different key placements on historical bassoons. So, are you ready for this? It's morphin' time! Brontosaurus! <laughs> Having worked with a number of historical bassoons in my career, I found that many makers tend not to care a great deal about the ergonomics of the keys for the right hand little finger. In any case, the keys on the boot joint of a Baroque bassoon are not laid out in a way which will allow you to do the sort of quick transition from one key to the next as a modern bassoon would. And whenever possible, avoid building into the basic scales uh, fingerings which require you to move from the A-flat to the F key. Unfortunately, sometimes this can't be avoided. Now, when working with a Baroque instrument, I find the easiest way to conceive of the technique for the little finger is to avoid moving the pad of the finger to activate each key. Instead, use the pad of the finger to activate the F key, and the proximal interphalangeal joint that's the joint after the knuckle, so this one, to activate the A-flat key. It's not a technique that you can port over from the modern bassoon, so it can take some getting used to. Next, classical bassoons. Now, classical bassoons often have smaller, more nimble keys, which are placed so as they can be both activated by the pad of the little finger. What can be difficult is the design of the key work. It will be likely quite hard to slide the finger from one key to the next, as you would do on a modern bassoon with rollers. If you have this problem, I recommend putting just a tiny bit of Vaseline on your finger before playing the instrument. This will give you enough lubrication to feel as if you, you had rollers on the keys. But I know it's another thing to transport the pot of Vaseline with you on stage, but I tell you it's totally worth it. Now, watch out, however, because using too much Vaseline over time will cause issues. The excess jelly will slide off the sides of the keys and end up pooling along the, the side of the boot joint. And after some time, the key itself will actually not be able to bounce back as quickly because it's getting stuck into that Vaseline. So if you overdo it and you feel that there's an issue with the action of the key, then what you can do immediately is just wipe away the excess. Finally, the bend, shape, and tension of the keys can all be modified to your needs. I've found that over the years, makers tend not to set up their instruments so that they are comfortable in my hands, at least. Let's take a look at the desk and see what options are available to us. The three basic components to my own key setup kit are a small flathead screwdriver, sticky tack, and scotch tape. I realize that this may seem a little bit like amateur hour, but stay with me. So, fundamentally, if we start with a Baroque instrument, the keys here, which look a little rough, but when you get it new, what I had trouble with is that these keys were not bent in a way which allowed me to manipulate my the keys with my finger comfortably. So what I had was feeling was that this edge here was cutting into my finger as I put it down. And so all I needed to do was simply take the screw out and don't lose this and then actually just bend the key the way that I wanted to. You'll also notice that there's cork under the key. Not everybody does this. If you feel that the key is depressing too far, you can put some sticky tack under the key and then put some scotch tape over it and it will act as if the cork were there. Another thing that you can do is that if the key is too easy and does not bounce back hard enough, if the action is too weak, then you can simply take your fingers or some pliers and bend the spring that way upwards 
to increase the tension on the key. You also want to make sure that the key doesn't wiggle in the socket. So you can see this one is fixed in place, but this one traditionally has not been. It is fixed now, but only after I put some scotch tape into the socket to stop the key from moving side to side. The issue with the keys wiggling is going to mean that it will not form a perfect seal under the pad. On this classical instrument, you'll see as well here that I've put the sticky tack under the key, even though it did have some cork. So as I, it could allow me only enough play for me to easily move my finger back and forth. Otherwise, this would have been too low here, and this would have been too high for me to have easily climbed back up the key. So setting up your keys are incredibly important here. Also, don't be afraid if you feel that a certain tone uh, key is sticking out too far. You can, of course, change slightly the pitch or the action by adding layers of paper or cork below the keys. While at first I was very conservative with manipulating the placement and setup of my keys, now I change things whenever I want. Brass keys are very pliable, and all of the setup work a professional would do, in any case, would be done by hand. If you have an original instrument, don't mess with the key work. Get a professional restorer to do that. That's it for me today. If you found this video useful and want to support this channel, then please do consider becoming a patron via Patreon. And don't forget to like here on YouTube, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and take it easy. Bye-bye.